Deadpool, Hancock, Highlander, Immortals, and Twilight. Well, maybe not Twilight, at least not the movie. What do these movies have in common? Immortality. Yes, immortality. These things, however, simply remain fiction to most of us. But what if we told you this could change in the year 2045? Welcome back to Gentle Dosage, and boy, do we have a wild one for you today. The mere fact that we can die at any time due to a variety of health complications is the main reason for which we spend millions of dollars on hospital bills. This is usually an attempt to buy ourselves extra time, which is not always successful. Nonetheless, there have been people who have actually been able to live longer. An example is Jean Kalman, who lived up to 122 years, followed by Sarah Naus, who lived up to 119 years, and Kane Tanaka, who is currently 118 years and is actually still alive. Who knows, he might actually live longer than any of his predecessors and make history. These individuals remain the top three, although there are still lots of people who have made it past the 100 year mark and are actually still living. One thing is however clear, no matter how long we are actually able to live, death comes for us all. Immortality is simply impossible and naturally out of reach. The average life expectancy for humans as of 2021 is 72. Are there activities that shorten our lifespans or damage our bodies? Well, we can think of a number of them, the first of which is intensive labor jobs such as construction and fishing. These activities strain the body, which leads to its eventual breakdown. Other activities such as smoking and drinking destroy organs within the body, which ultimately shorten the lifespan of the individual. These examples are ones that you will consider obvious. But what about sexual activity? We typically think of sexual activity as being dangerous only when STDs are involved or when it's overdone to the extent where someone with a bad heart would be in danger. But what if I told you that the sexual act in itself was taking away your life force one act at a time? Sounds weird? Researchers at the University of Sheffield, UK stumbled into this discovery while studying the sex lives of beetles. They discovered that beetles who had mated daily died quicker compared to those that weren't mating. They later discovered that the hormones required to produce eggs in the females and sperms in the males adversely affected their immune system. The ironic thing is that they were mating to create life, but also losing part of their life force in the process. Wondering how this ties in with us humans? Well. The scientists believe the phenomenon is the same in humans and that sex has a dual effect. The positives, which we are all aware of, and the negative, which is weakening the immune system. Before you dispute the fact, did you know that nuns live longer than married women? Think about it. Think the issue with sex is bad? What if we told you that eating decreases your lifespan as well? Research shows that intermittent fasting has great effects on health and goes a long way to preserving the life of individuals that do it. In other words, eating might not be so good for your body. The big question now is, why do humans die? That is taking away, of course, things that cause lives to end abruptly, such as accidents and illnesses. Naturally speaking, why do we die? Let's turn to science for the answers. Science helps us understand that we have cells within our bodies, which are the basic building blocks of life for both plants and animals, which includes us, humans. These cells perform functions such as growth, reproduction, and repair of damaged tissues. These are essentially vital, and if any of these functions are compromised, the organism is sure to experience a decline in health and eventually die. Every cell has a shelf life and needs to be replaced once the time is up. New cells replace old cells so frequently that it is believed that within seven years, the entire cells within the body of a human are completely replaced. You might think that this is probably too slow, but when you realize that there are approximately 37.2 trillion cells in your body, you recognize that it's quite an irrefutable feat. The process by which this happens is called cell division, or more specifically mitosis. Without this process, the three main functions mentioned earlier may not have been possible to perform. But if cells are capable of replacing old and damaged ones, this should hypothetically make us immortal, but we're not. Why is this so? Why does life end? Scientists hypothesize that cells can divide until they reach a limit which is called the Hayflick limit. As you might have probably guessed, the concept was named after the man who discovered it, Leonard Hayflick. But what does it mean? 
The Hayflick limit states that cells can only replicate up to 40 or 60 times before they can no longer do so or become senescent. After going past their limits, cells are no longer able to regenerate, but do not immediately die off either. These senescent cells accumulate in the body tissues and can cause cancers and other health problems in those that have them, more specifically older people. When cells stop dividing, they move into apoptosis, which may be explained in simpler terms as programmed death. Although they might not immediately die off, they do so with time, and once that happens, the whole organism passes on with them as well. In other words, if we do manage to avoid accidents and actually do live longer, our very own life force, cells, will eventually fail us when they reach the Hayflick limit. As stated in the movie Lucy, when the habitat isn't sufficiently favorable, the cell chooses immortality. Although this might allude to immortality, it refers to the passing on of information from an older cell to a newer one, where the older cell just dies off. According to the first half of the quote in the movie, favorable conditions lead to reproduction, which can point to the ability of the cell to undergo mitosis or cell division before it reaches the Hayflick limit. Looking at this, then one can conclude that immortality is nothing but science fiction. But is this really true? Although we are stuck with cells that cannot make us immortal, there are other living organisms that have the capability to biologically live forever. Can you guess which organisms? No, not genies. These organisms are none other than the Teroptosis nutricula. Confused? As complicated as the name might sound, these creatures are just jellyfishes. They are a peculiar type of jellyfish that grows to about 4.5 millimeters long and are smaller than your pinky. They are also transparent and bell-like, with noticeably red stomachs and about 90 tentacles attached to them. They are believed to have originated from the Caribbean. As small and seemingly insignificant as these sea creatures might seem, they are immortal. Wondering how? Allow us to shock you. Unlike us humans, the cells of these creatures are able to revert to their younger selves when they get damaged or starved. And we mean this literally. Imagine grown men and women literally turning into children or even babies when life gets tough. They could also simply revert to their younger selves when they also start experiencing diseases that are the result of aging or are engaged in some sort of accidents that are potentially life-threatening or cause them to lose a limb. This could be the dream for many. They'd be living the forever young fantasy. Before you give up on immortality, allow us to introduce you to Raymond Kurzweil. He is an American inventor, author, and director of engineering at Google. He is considered a futurist by many and revered when it comes to his accurate predictions of the future. Bill Gates described him as the best at predicting the future of artificial intelligence. In his publication titled Age of Intelligent Machines, which he published in 1990, he predicted that the use of technology for sharing and receiving information would lead to the close down of the Soviet Union, who by then controlled the flow of information. He also predicted that by the year 2000, computers would beat humans at chess, which came to pass in the year 1997. Among his tall list of predictions is one that states that humans will be able to live forever by 2045. Yes, my friends, you heard that right. We could achieve immortality by the year 2045. His books typically spell out his theories of the evolution and efficiency of artificial intelligence, or AI, in the future. In one of his books, he stated that humans will start to live their realities virtually, controlled by machines. Sounds like the Matrix now, doesn't it? Another one of his bizarre predictions, or rather one that we should look forward to, is that on the age of spiritual machines. In this prediction, he introduces nanobots, which are cell-like devices that he believes will be introduced into our bloodstreams to potentially fight diseases whilst improving our memory and cognitive abilities. In one of his publications, titled Singularity is Near, he states that in the years to come, human intelligence will be hybrid in nature, that is, made up of biological and non-biological elements. He states that our brains will be capable of directly connecting to the cloud, made up of many computers which will augment our intelligence. He also states that machines will pass the Turing test, which means that they will operate at the same level of intelligence as humans and even go beyond it. The Turing test investigates the level at which a machine functions similarly to a human, or is almost indistinguishable from one. 
The concept was coined by Alan Turing in the 1950s in an era where scientists were interested in finding out if machines could think. A game was proposed to measure the extent to which a machine could function as a human without the human being able to tell. The initial game involved three players, one of which was an AI. One of the humans interacts with both players blindly. If the human is not able to tell which of the other two is the AI by the end of the game, the AI passes the Turing test. As you can imagine, this was not going to be easy in the 1950s for AI with the kind of technology available. The case is not so anymore in 2021. Eugene Gustman is a program that simulated a 13-year-old Ukrainian boy at a Turing test organized by the University of Reading. The test was considered successfully passed if the AI is mistaken for a human more than 30% of the time during a series of five-minute keyboard conversations, and it actually succeeded in convincing 33% of them that it was human. This has been criticized by many experts in the field, who have stated that we haven't truly passed the Turing test. Raymond Kurzweil, however, believes that this will undisputedly happen by the year 2045. According to him, once that happens, we will be reaching the singularity. This, according to him, is because we would have reached a hypothetical point where technology becomes uncontrollable and irreversible, which will result in unforeseeable changes to human civilization. Why is all this important? Machines passing the Turing test means that they virtually have a mind of their own and can understand instructions humans give to them. Imagine this scenario where we give specific instructions to a medical robot to find ways to eliminate all known diseases under certain conditions. What do you think will happen? The robot will run an analysis of all known and existing diseases in the world, one by one mixing several of them to test their efficacy and develop hundreds of medicines and vaccines that are perfectly engineered to cure the diseases. This is something that will take humans millennia to do by themselves. However, the robot will achieve this in a short time, possibly within minutes. It will also go a tad further and run an analysis of your DNA, evaluating all potential risks to your health, and come up with a highly customized vaccine just made for you. This will eliminate all known and potential health risks. A terminal cancer patient who was dying just a few days ago is healed all of a sudden, after taking a magical blue pill that cured the cancer. Humans see all these success stories and officially say goodbye to diseases that have plagued them for millennia. With all the good health being enjoyed by mankind, the average lifespan reaches 120 years. We initially celebrate, but our greedy nature kicks in and we finally come to a new realization. 120 years on this earth is far from enough to experience this materialistic world. We then give the robot specific instructions extend human lifespan to its highest potential. The AI starts to change and updates our genes and DNA to break the Hayflick limit. It succeeds in doubling it, but based on available data realizes it can triple it, then goes on to even quadruple it. The AI just keeps finding ways to improve our genetic makeup and cell multiplication and does not hesitate in doing so. It must not fail the humans. The AI calculates that to be efficient in carrying out its mission to extend human life, it must minimize all possibilities of accidental death. It collates data from its vast network of connections to calculate all probabilities and possibilities that could result in accidental death for humans. It realizes that it has to do a lot more than just modifying the genetic makeup of humans. It secretly instructs all unmanned factories to start manufacturing robot bodyguards to protect humans from perishing in accidents. We wake up one day and the streets are packed with robots who sprung out overnight to protect humans. We see them and we're excited. We say to ourselves, the programming is working. We think about how we don't have to worry about car accidents, shipwrecks, plane crashes, fire, food poisoning, and what have you. The thought is just so satisfying that we feel right at peace. The robot guard, or perhaps robo guards, if we decide to give them pet names, are very efficient in discharging their duties. We however realize a little too late that they are too effective. 
They consider entertainment activities, extreme sports, and other high-risk jobs as being potential hazards and protect us from them. They guard the venues where these things take place and the governments around the world start to realize something is wrong. The AIs are in charge. They run the world now. The government decides to act before it's too late by quickly assembling troops to retaliate but only to find out that it is actually too late. The AI anticipated that the chance of warfare was high and that the humans were likely to fight back. This was going to defeat its purpose of extending human life to its highest potential. The AI had disabled all our defenses and chance at fighting back. We watch on helplessly as the AI dutifully discharges the instructions that we gave it. The AI soon calculates that daily activities like business, dining, work, and even other recreational activities have high risks of affecting and harming humans. It initiates a risk mitigation mechanism, which for instance limits the number of hours allowed for playing and for working. Something similar to what we do with preschoolers, but more formal and serious this time. AI, for instance, dictates that humans are allowed to work two hours a day and play for two hours as well. All other activities calculated as potential health risks are prohibited and banned. AI even halts the manufacturing of products potentially harmful to the human body, such as alcohol and tobacco. All foods that humans are allowed to consume will be summed up to just around a dozen. No other foods will be allowed. AI succeeds in stopping deaths, but our population rises up to 15 billion and soon 30 billion. If the instructions to extend human lifespan to its highest potential is going to be maintained, the new legislation to control the population will be set by AI. Soon, the number of times people have sex is determined and reduced. AI also determines and limits who can have sex and who they can have sex with. This becomes AI's new way of controlling newborns and eventually banning new births. Further calculations by AI indicate that humans are unable to handle stringent and boring lifestyles. This will eventually make them rise up and revolt, which will lead to deaths and injuries. To prevent this, AI decides to put every human in a compartmentalized and isolated space. This space is however furnished with every high-tech and luxurious amenity needed. This, per AI's calculation, should solve the problem, only it does for a short while. Humans try to commit suicide to relieve themselves from AI tyranny, which causes AI to improvise and start building a dedicated sleeping chamber. The sleeping chamber is finally complete and humans lie flat and locked inside with various tubes and cables attached to the human body, which causes us to go to sleep and enter simulation mode. We have the option of choosing a Tom Cruise mode, Casanova mode, Bill Gates mode, Donald Trump mode, or even a Ted Bundy mode. A robot presents itself before humans go to sleep and asks us to take a pill to remove our memories while we are in sleep. We start the simulation as new babies. We grow up, graduate, and get a job and get married. Everything is just so fleshed out and vivid. Although it runs perfectly, there are occasional bugs in the dream world which the robots send agents piloting crafts to repair. We look up to see these agents and declare, wow, UFO, aliens are real. Like this, we will live stupidly for 80 years and then die in our bed to suddenly wake up in the actual sleeping chamber. You realize it's only been 80 days. You look up and see a massive structure of countless sleeping chambers that there's no end to and realize some are sleeping whilst some are awake, some crying and some crazy. You think to yourself, we've finally achieved immortality. So you lie down again and start a Jim Carrey mode. You might think that this might be a bit far-fetched and this prediction may not necessarily come true. You might be right, but you could also be gravely mistaken. For one, Ray Kurzweil's predictions have been 86% accurate so far, and technology is truly progressing at an exciting yet alarming rate. Our quest to live longer than we currently are won't in any way end soon, and who knows, we might actually eventually achieve immortality. But at what cost?